Hey guys, um, so this video is just kind of like a quick um, experiment or test uh, where I'm just going to try to create as much of this homepage as possible. Um, I may just see where we get tonight and go from there or I may try to do the whole page. Um, but I was really interested in trying to do this kind of like angled cuts in Webflow. Um, so since we're short on time, it is 9.59 p.m. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've added a section already, and um, I think my game plan is basically to create, inside of that section, it's gonna be the container for three different things. This angled cut, this angled cut, and then this box that has some of like the content in it. Um, so uh, we'll call this the hero section, and um, we'll make it relative so that we can absolutely position a bunch of different elements inside of it and then I think we'll make it um, 100 VH for now. Right. Next is uh, we'll call this hero image and um, I might make it just like 80 VH for now we can mess with that later and then let's go ahead and um, give it a background color just for now um, just so that we can kind of see like what we're doing and I'm going to use a transform well first I'm going to set the um, transform origin to the right bottom right and then um, I'm going to add a transform of a skew I think of 12 degrees okay um, I'm just kind of like guessing uh, it looks a little bit stronger than probably needs to be all right that's looking pretty good all right and then um, I think uh, actually I'm gonna make its positioning relative so that then inside of this hero image I can add um, hero image background uh, I'm not worried too much about my naming conventions here. So I'm going to absolutely position this and um, go ahead and add our image. All right. Um, so, so what I'll do here is um, use the transform and basically re-skew it back in the opposite direction. So I think we were landed on 10. All right, that looks right. And so with my hero image, so this is the parent element, right? Um, if I do uh, overflow hidden, um, it's gonna restrict the background image inside of this. All right, so um, the only thing I don't like is, um, oh jeez. All right, there we go, that looks better. All right, so I think that matches pretty closely to what we have. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is that little bit of shadow. Um, there's actually three shadows, so I can add those really quick uh, using the box shadow here. All right, so uh, zero stands for um, zero two two zero. The angle zero two two zero and is fourteen. All right, so that's the first one. Um, I'm just realizing that might not work. Um, Oh, it's because I'm on here. I'm on hero image background. I see. Um, so I actually need to do this in the hero image, the parent element. All right, there we go. Okay, so it should be zero, two, two, zero. This should be fourteen. Okay, add another one. At zero, three, one, negative two, zero, three, one. Two and it's at twelve, 
and then one last one at zero one five zero zero one five zero and this is going to be at 20. all right so now we have a little bit of shadow um all right, so uh, the last thing I want to do with my hero image is go ahead and start giving these a Z index so I can stack them um, on top of each other. So I think I'm going to give this one a Z index of negative one. Um, actually, I'm going to do two. All right, and then in the hero section, I'm going to add another dip block. And we're going to call this um, uh, solid color background. I'm going to um, absolutely position it full. Um, and then let me give it a, um, some background color so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to skew it as well. So again, we're going to set our ink transform origin point to the bottom right. And we're going to skew it. But instead of 10, we'll do something like 8 degrees. OK. And then um, hero image relative. H. So I think with the solid color, um, we can make this, let's try 90 VH. Um, all right, and then I think I want to mess with the angle because uh, it's quite a bit longer here than it is here. So I think. Um, I want to mess with this just a little bit. There we go. Something like that. All right. Um, so uh, maybe the next thing is we can go ahead and add um, our navigation. And I might go ahead and add that. Um, inside of the hero section and with the nav bar selected i'll make the positioning absolute and add to the top okay and um so what i want to do is move a couple of things in the nav bar. And I know that I want to move the nav menu to the middle there and then add a button. And uh, here. Last is I'll put a container inside of the nav bar. We kind of just deleted the existing container. Um, so I'm going to recreate kind of like our own custom container. So we'll just call it container. And kind of like my go to is 85% max with 1320 pixels and center aligned. All right. And then we're going to call it the hero, or sorry, nav bar container. And I'm going to use Flexbox and uh, push all of the elements. And um, maybe the last thing I'll do is with the nav menu in the settings. Um, Instead of having the menu icon for tablet and below, I'm gonna slide this to the left so that the menu icon is being used uh, even on desktop. All right, um, all right, navbar selected. I'm gonna get rid of 
the background. And I'm just noticing when we did the flex, uh, um, you see the button is like taking up the full height. Uh, we don't want that because we want the button to have uh, its spacing defined by the padding inside the button. So I just simply align uh, to top, should be sufficient. And then um, I think every element is 50 pixels from the top. So if we simply just do 50 pixels of padding, that move everything down. All right, next is, let's move our logo in here. Um, I'll call it uh, logo icon. And then um, I'll add a text block and um, this is a Verda. We'll call it um, logo name and it is 28 pixels, that navy blue. Um, a Verda regular. I'm just going to use M's and I think I'll use um, 1.5 M's. Um, that looks about right. And we're going to be using Averta. And uh, with the brand selected, I'm going to use Flexbox, Vertical, and uh, um, it went ahead and aligned it for me. Perfect. Okay. Um, I realize I'm going to be using a custom button because I have to use an SVG to achieve this little kind of like chiseled effect. Um, so I'm going to add a div block there and call this uh, button chiseled. <laughs> All right. So uh, then I'll add. Um, actually, what I'll do is uh, I should have made that a link block. So let me add that link block and then button chiseled. Okay. And then I'll add um, a fresh div block that will be button wrapper. And inside of the button wrapper, a piece of text. That text will say contact. All right, and um, I think with the button chisel selected, um, we can go ahead and make some styling uh, things here. So it's a vertus on my bold fourteen. Let's take off the underline and then it's going to be white and then have a background of our blue and we need to figure out the padding. So 10, 10, 10, 10. So essentially 10 on each side. It looks like it's enough. Oh, it's 20 on the side. Okay, just couldn't read it because it was too faint. All right. And then I think this is all caps. Um, so make sure the button chiseled is selected. I make the all caps. And then uh, I don't have this in my sketch file, but. When you make something all caps, um, it can be difficult to read if you don't add a little bit of letter spacing just to give the letters some breathing room. So uh, let's start with 0.5, maybe one, and that works. Okay, so I th think button wrapper, button chiseled. Um, so I think kind of making a guess here, but I think I can add my SVG. All right, 
right, so I added the padding to the wrong, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. I added it to the wrong element. So I should have been adding it to the button wrapper. So this is, needs to be 10. And this needs to be 20. This needs to be a dark blue. All right. And then we'll make this 10. And then with button chill selected, we'll use Flexbox to make them side by side. Um, that's perfect. And I want to set, um, I'll just call it chisel angle. Uh, I'll set the width to 10 pixels just to make sure that it's that same. Oops. Um, so a little bit, it's like a few pixels off. Um, it's bugging me. Okay. So as soon as I deselect it, um, what if I do height 100%? Hmm, there must be something. Uh, this must be like a glitch of um, the way that I imported the SVG button chiseled horizontal. Let's try adding like one pixel of border to the bottom, see if that helps. Uh, not really. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it as is, uh, just because for the sake of the video, I don't wanna spend all of our time <laughs> trying to fix that button. Um, but the reason I brought in a, um, an SVG uh, was because it was gonna give me that angle uh, without having to worry about um, yeah, the other stuff. So uh, I was hoping that would work, um, but I guess not. <sighs> Bummer. I kind of feel like not giving up, but um, I know I should. Okay, I'm just gonna give up. Okay, keep focusing on just finishing up the rest of the page. Whoops. And uh, for the navbar, the last thing I'll do is I wanna add um, our little lines there. So these are two pixels by 15, okay. So, um, so I'll just add another div block. Um, and then, uh, so I'll call this um, hamburger wrapper, and then add a fresh div block. Um, and we'll call it uh, just to be cute hamburger patty. All right, so it's gonna be 15 pixels wide by two pixels tall, and we'll give it the background of that blue, and you should have a line there, okay. Awesome. Just gonna get rid of the icon and I'm gonna make sure that still opens. Yeah, okay. So just creating like a custom icon. So a little different from um, three pixels. Um, all right, so if I take that hamburger patty and duplicate it three times, it's gonna give us um, the three lines. And then um, I'll call this combo class middle patty and make its width 10. And that gives us that line there. 
So that way we can add some animation to this and make it a little bit more fun. And then with the last patty, um, actually what I can do is get rid of the three. Instead of uh, adding another combo class to the last patty to get rid of the padding on the bottom, um, where are the patties? Um, since this already has a combo class, I can just add our three pixels here on either end. Perfect. And then I'm going to add some text. It says menu. And uh, I don't know, 14. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and call this uh, link. Um, 14. Go ahead and start changing things over. So 14. All caps. Uh, we'll make it 1.5 M's. It's going to be the dark blue. all caps one and it seems like it's a hot medium okay we'll stick with the semi bolt all right and then with the menu button selected I'll use flexbox to um, I was expecting that to work, uh, so I'm not entirely sure why it's not. Um, um, maybe we can just use good old fashioned floats. Um, and make this an uh, inline block. And make this um, float left in my block. There we go. Um, the menu button is huge. Uh, so I might just bring this down a bit so it's more in line with this stuff and with the hamburger wrapper um, I'm just gonna push this down to about there and it's 10 pixels away all right awesome so uh, so I think that should work in terms of opening our menu perfect um, uh, I think seeing it uh, live, um, I don't like how it's all uh, top aligned. So I think uh, having it vertically aligned um, or center aligned feels a little better. Okay. And then uh, last thing I'll try to do is this white section here. Um, all right, so here image. We've got this set at Z index two. We'll set this to Z index one. And then in the hero section, we're gonna add one more dev block and uh, we'll call it um, hero content wrapper. Um, we'll make sure that it's absolutely positioned um, to the bottom. Uh, what do I want to do? Zero. Um, I'm wondering if I should actually slide it inside of the solid color. Um, that would make sense. No, it does not. Um, the solid color is 
85 VH and if I make that this 85 okay there we go so I just made the hero section the parent wrap that's holding everything inside of it I made it the same uh, height as this just so that um, this white section uh, would fall like right here all right so with the hero content wrapper I'm going to uh, oh, I thought that would work. Um, all right, let's start. Um, so thirty pixels, and fifty on either side. Just going ahead and adding some styling and we'll worry about positioning in a second um, I'm gonna add a heading and we'll make it our h1 And I think that um, everything is that weird blue because uh, I accidentally set it here. All right, there we go. And this is Averta. So with all itch ones, um, size 28, and we'll make it. Um, 1.5 M's and um, I want to give it a max width of 400 and I think it's centered yeah um, instead of centering it in the heading I like to try to do the alignment in the parent element um, and I'm going to loosen this up a little bit so we can get only two lines. There we go. All right, here, content wrapper. I'm going to give this a background of white. And so it's Z index to like five or something. All right, so now we just got to push this into the middle of... Um, So I think what I can do is uh, and then move all right and then transform oh, that should be good and then move it to the right 50 percent I think DW. And then let me set its origin. Okay, that's not helping. How do I position this thing? <laughs> Let me get rid of the transform. Let me go ahead and make this zero. See, that's what I was afraid of it doing. And so what I might do is um, get rid of this stuff, get rid of the background. And then add a child element inside of this stuff. And then make this flex box. Okay, so I think we're getting somewhere. And then um, <laughs> I 
uh, I'll call it um, header header wrapper child. And this is what will give this, um, what was it, 30 pixels? And this was 50. And then it has the white background. All right. OK, so we're, we're getting there. Next is our paragraph. go back to our body tag and go ahead and set um, body to Proxima Nova um, this is going to be 16 28 uh, I think I'll just say two M's um, And uh, okay, and then I'm going to make the text color that, and declare this as a global swatch. Okay, last thing I'll do is set 626 as the max. And I need to set. All right. Um, um, I wanted to avoid doing another flex box here, but uh, it's kind of the easiest way to position my. Uh, text there, so I'll just have to use it unfortunately. And I just want to make sure that spacing here is correct. So there's 10 pixels of margin here, so this needs to be 30. Uh, you know, I just noticed all of a sudden this got huge. Uh, oh, it's because it became 16. Alright, so uh, button wrapper, button chiseled. So I think if we set this to 14, there we go, and set spacing to 1M. We're like so close to getting this absolutely perfect. Um, I wonder what I had. 18 pixels. I wonder if that's going to help. Perfect. Um, I hate not to use M's, but uh, just for the sake of this video, I, I had to use pixels here in the line height um, to get the SVG to line up perfectly. So. Um, it's feeling a little bold, semi-bold. Let's try normal. Okay. And then something happened over here. Uh, so I guess I'll have to just add a few more pixels. All right, um, I think maybe the last thing I'll do, uh, oh, I have to do the link. Um, so let me add that. So I'm gonna add a link block. And we'll call it uh, text arrow link. So inside, I'll have a piece of text. And then really quickly, let me grab this 
and export it as an SVG. And we'll call it um, arrow link. And add it inside of here. All right, and then this will say uh, more about us, more about us. And I'm pretty sure if I add the link CSS class, um, perfect. Uh, maybe the last thing I'll do is, not last, but um, I'll call this link arrow. And move it 10 pixels to the right. All right. Whoops mean to do that and then you'll notice that uh, there's 40 pixels of spacing above it um, and so what I, what I might want to do is um, uh, instead of using margin which is essentially going to push this away um, I want to use padding and the reason for that is it's going to increase kind of like the real estate of the hover action the clickability um, so I might actually do that here as well. Just uh, make this 30. All right. And then uh, see what happens when I make it 30 there. All right. Awesome. Um, I feel like this is a good place to stop. Um, maybe the last thing I'll do is uh, show you guys how I, um, uh, just realizing that it um, feels like this is a little bit more space than uh, what I gave it. So let's make this 15. Um, actually, I like 10. Um, what I might show you guys is how I make this, uh, how I animate this so that there's a little bit of animation on hover. All right, so uh, mouse hover, we're gonna create a new animation and we'll call it um, arrow link. On. Right. And so um, we're going to move it, uh, let's just say um, 10 pixels to the right. And we'll try one second ease. Let's see what that looks like. One second is a lot. Okay, let's try ease out. Okay, and then um, we definitely want to affect the class and the link arrow is a child of the uh, text arrow link element. So if we do only children with this class, um, we can keep uh, the animation strictly to this kind of like set of elements. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and duplicate it and then start an animation. We'll rename this arrow link off and move back to zero. And I like it when um, it kind of snaps back a little faster, so I make that 0 0.2 seconds. All right, and then the very last thing I'll do is um, set the animation not to the element text arrow link but to the class itself text arrow link so that way if i copy and paste this element every single time it's going to have this animation that's way too slow um, so i think with arrow link on it might be better to make this 0.5 
You'll notice uh, what I mentioned about padding. If I hover over right here, you see the animation begins, and uh, that's because of the padding. So it's um, like I said, it's increasing the real estate of our link and our hover action. All right. I think that's a good stopping point. I like where we're at. Um, I may kind of continue this, but um, this was really fun. So uh, if you enjoyed following along, I know that I can ramble and uh, I don't know who would find this interesting, but if you do, then please click subscribe and uh, leave some comments below. Let me know what you enjoyed, what I can improve on and uh, what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much, guys. It is 1039. Have a good night.